Switzerland. My name is Sonja Donau-Adums and on behalf of our association, I'm very happy to welcome you all. Also welcome to Michaela, she's our technical su support behind the scenes. And Biomimicry Switzerland is back with another webinar. We wish to bring biomimicry, its principles and applications closer to a wider public and raise awareness about this great lens for tackling all different types of challenges we face today, be they technical, social or global. Tonight, I'm very happy to welcome Emily van Heesch Smith. She's a sustainable floral decor artist and consultant. She's based in Johannesburg in South Africa. Currently, she's the in-house florist at Four Seasons Hotel, the West Cliff. She's also consulting the Four Seasons Resort Mauritius on using floral materials from surrounding gardens and local farmers while upskilling in-house staff. Outside of the Four Seasons group, she works for African lodges based in wild places with different type of look, incorporating materials from the local area, which encourages local staff involvement and creativity. As an evolution through the impact of COVID on the industry, she has become a sustainable floral artist. And I heard that Emily also rethinks the production of flower form. But please go ahead and introduce yourself further. I just, uh, before I pass it on, a few housekeeping rules. Um, Emily will lead us uh, through her presentation for about uh, 20 minutes. Please feel free to post your questions in the meantime in the chat. She will answer them later. And the second part of this webinar is dedicated to interactions and Q&A. Do not be shy, unmute yourself and go for it. Interactivity is that what we are looking for. So Emily, the time is for you to take over and lead us into tonight's webinar. Please take over from here and please introduce you in more detail yourself. Thanks for coming. Thank you so much, Sonia. And thank you everybody for joining me here and Sonia today here. So I will take you through some work that I've been working on in the last few years. Um, and in relation to this particular webinar tonight, uh, the theme that I've worked around is um, creating appeal and hospitality through, the, through nature inspired floral design. So my inspiration for this evening um, oh, hang on. It's hang on. My presentation is seems to be frozen. Oh, there we go. So, my theme for this evening is going to be talking around um, uh, guests are to hospitality, what bees are to flowers. So they share a mutual partnership. Mutualisms in nature take many forms, yet all ultimately share the same outcome, prospering in a reciprocal partnership where the success of one party supports the success of the other. So in hospitality, this is created, the, the appeal and allure is created just like flowers create allure and appeal for bees. So through floral design displays, visual experiences are provided for guests where they interact with what they see and perceive it at their personal level. And that's what I do. Um, I create appeal and allure through the guest experience, reconnection and aesthetic thinking. I look at the guest experience. It is the way guests feel during their stay from the interaction with staff on their arrivals when they come through the hotel right through to the floral displays that welcome the guests in the restaurant. When people see these flowers and displays, it, it rekindles a sense of awe and inspiration. Some people, it, they might not actually be aware of it. It might only be a subconscious, on a subconscious level, but that is what, what we experience. Um, reconnection, by, recreate, by creating floral designs, I offer connection with nature to the viewer. It is this reconnection that inspires a truly joyful experience. And aesthetic thinking, which involves producing or discovering things which are pleasant, harmonious and beautiful to our senses. Um, with flowers, um, it considers how art 
can affect moods or even our beliefs. So creating the guest experience from the perspective of a hospitality floral artist, which is myself in this particular case, um, how do I do that? So I do that through storytelling through flowers. And I, I ask the question sometimes, or I just go into the idea, into the design of how can I create environmental awareness through floral art design? Or how can I tell this property story through flowers? Or what seasonal story am I bringing into the space? How am I doing sustainable floristry through, through floral art? I've got quite a lot of images that I will share with you that will will cover some of those questions um, that I've just show that I've just um, asked here. So to start, um, in two thousand and nineteen, um, it was the first time that I created public awareness through floral art. Before I was just doing you know a lot of fresh cut flowers, buying them from the market, importing flowers, etc., and making fresh flowers for the spaces of the hotel, which would then be replaced once a week and a lot of waste would happen. Then there was this opportunity in 2019 to be part of an exhibition. Um, and it was an exhibition that I approached to create public awareness about an alien insect epidemic that was affecting and is still affecting many of our trees in our country, um, the polyphagus shuttlebora beetle. Um, for Johannesburg being one of the largest man-made urban forests in the world, as I mentioned earlier, this would mean the death of many large canopy trees. So my exhibition, or rather my design, um, for the Johannesburg International Flower Show uh, was really about um, to create awareness to the public, so it was for educational purposes, um, and um, it was also to, yeah, to create awareness. What I did was I, it was the first time that I had to very carefully consider what flowers I was going to use because I didn't want them to die and how on earth was I going to do this. This was a self-funded um, uh, exhibition and how was I going to try and get that money back. I had all sorts of schemes from, you know, trying to sell it off to corporates, you know, as a, an awareness um, a project for them, but um, it was quite a far-fetched idea at that point and I wasn't quite ready for that. But it did actually bring me to um, a whole sustainable um, thinking, and that was to what that was in the way of what flowers I was going to actually use. So I, I chose a variety of flowers, which is a locally grown flower. It is originally not from South Africa. It's the Banksia flower, which is in an, in its natural form. It's like a cream color, and then I dyed that into all the different shades that I wanted. And I can then reuse them afterwards because they would hold their shape and their color for a long time afterwards. So that was my first introduction to sustainability in its very early days. Um, later that year, I used those flowers um, as Christmas decorations. We recycled a lot of them. Um, not all of that is seen here, but a lot of it was recycled into these Christmas decorations for the hotel. Um, and then we started to um, use different products and explore with more products. Um, so, you know, working with dried flowers, it was a bit of a mind shift, not only for me, but for, you know, for everyone. You know, I had to change perceptions and preconceived beliefs about dried flowers because it's not everyone's, um, you know, first preference to use dried flowers. So even a, a guest once asked me, why are flowers out of the water because they're dying? And my reply to her was, I'm actually preserving them so that they last longer and can be recycled again, and in so doing, prolonging their life. Um, then 2020, the COVID pandemic enabled me the opportunity to do things different. Obviously, we know what that happened, what that did to the hospitality industry. It completely shut us all down. Um, but for me, it was an opportunity to try something different. Um, so for me, um, it was nature giving me a signal to pay attention, to rethink the way in which I designed with flowers. I sat and I had to really think about what I was going to do with my future. And so I started to ask my, myself the question from my perspective, I asked myself, how can I change the way I'm affecting the environment with the way I buy flowers and the way I use them and where they're coming from? 
Um, flower farming has an effect on the environment too, just like the food farming has. You know, there's a lot of emphasis on food farming and no one's really asking the question of flower farming, where those flowers come from, how they're being farmed. So my question was, how can I reduce this impact? Um, so the impact of the COVID pandemic on hospitality allowed this opportunity to create something different. Um, with the national shutdown that we had, I had to rethink how to create designs. There was only limited stock in my storeroom with dried floral materials. There were no fresh flowers available. The market was closed. So um, I had to like really think how I was going to redo this. Through this new, you know, with these new designs that I was coming up with at home, um, from these dried materials that I had, which was not much material, it was just a little bit that I'd, you know, saved through the year to use for Christmas, I started to come up with sculptural work, um, new sculptural designs, and I thought, okay, I'm going to try and work around a theme with these designs, because maybe one day when the hotel opens again, maybe I can put these in there, you know, while I'm sitting here doing nothing or no having no work. So the, th the theme um, that I was working with, then um, basically it, it, it allowed for an exhibition to emerge. And so I um, changed from being just a hotel florist to a sustainable conscious floral artist. And so with these designs that I'd worked through, through lockdown and through um, the pandemic, I created this um, exhibition where I displayed all these um, art pieces that I now call them through the use of flowers. Um, just after I had done that exhibition, um, I was introduced to biomimicry and I did an immersion workshop with Claire Janish, um, which was a very big inspiration. And I just knew I had to take this further. I, you know, the sustainability and the way I was working, it was just one step. I knew I had to actually go much, much further. So um, I then added to my um, sustainable floral deco artist and consultant, I'm now a certified biomimicry practitioner as well. So that um, is part of what I do. So how do I do that? Um, incorporating the principles of biomimicry relating to my craft as a floral artist in hospitality, this is how I do it. You know, obviously I'm adapting to change of conditions, I'm evolving to survive, being locally attuned, being resource efficient, and integrating development with growth and using life-friendly chemistry. Those are the principles we know, but how do I do that? In hospitality, I look at the context of the property that I'm working with. Um, currently, the main product, uh, the, pro the main property I work with is the Four Seasons Hotel in Johannesburg, the West Cliff, which is an exclusive hillside icon in the city of Johannesburg. Um, the other property that I consult with is in Mauritius, which is a completely different context, which I'll go through just briefly as well. So with Johannesburg, um, obviously evolving to survive through the COVID uh, uh, period, um, we had to start working with different methods of doing flowers. So we started with dried flowers and um, start dyeing flowers ourselves. Um, obviously, the dye is not natural. It's not. It's. It's. That's what's. You know. That isn't natural. But um, it does enable me to create my own colors um, and create mixed tones and shades of colors where I need them to go into certain areas. So it gives me a whole other scope. So it makes it. It just creates a whole, a whole another level of of design possibilities. And I can recycle these flowers because they last. I can even re-dye flowers if they fade. So yeah. Um, again, looking at uh, being resourceful with uh, uh, with materials, um, in particular last year, which was a very good year for uh, the protea season in our winter. We had a phenomenal season. The flowers were absolutely spectacular. I don't know if it was that a lot of flowers weren't being exported out of the country and a lot of was staying local. 
um, just because with COVID things were much slower. So I had the opportunity to use so much. And at the same time, our hotel was really busy. We had a very good year at the hotel. And so the rooms were all asking for flowers. So all the guests were getting fresh flowers and all the spaces were getting fresh flowers. As well, in the rooms in particular, we're getting, um, um, and the functions we were doing, were, I was using proteas. So with these proteas, after they um, don't look their best anymore, which is about a week, sometimes less, sometimes more, it just depends on the actual farming of these proteas. Um, can everyone hear me okay still? Um, so, just checking. Okay. Um, with these proteas, we then took them out and um, we dried them naturally in the sun. Through our winter time, we have sun, a lot of sun. So all these proteas we dried and then we reused them for Christmas. So all the Christmas decorations that we did in the hotel this year, this last year was all dried proteas from the rooms early in the season, early in the year. Um, here we've used, this is our buffet area. It's recycled multiple times here. They are proteas from last year. Then we've incorporated um, succulents into that, so it gives it a bit of life. Then we've added in um, red and theorems for, uh, for a Valentine's theme. Um, we've added in colored banksias to add different colors, and even Easter eggs were incorporated to create an Easter feel. So we've repurposed this several times over and created different themes um, through the last several months. I also do a lot of experimentation with um, with materials that I think aren't going to dry and we just try it out and we have some amazing surprises. This design on the far left was a mixture of dried leaves and fresh. Um, and the image just on the left of that, to the right of that is of the same leaves that are in the picture on the left, but then dried. And it's very interesting. It actually dried together with another leaf, completely different species. And it's created a very interesting uh, sculptural piece on its own. So we have some incredible surprises that nature even does in our studio, even in the drying process. Um, so here on the, on the right, towards the right, we have cycad leaves, um, which um, I used in um, in its fresh form, and then again on its in its dry form, and it's a completely different um, design. So there's very little um, um, use of energy here, and there's also very little water then used um, for these dried flowers. Um, going back, going further on towards being locally attuned, um, I also use artisans, uh, local artisans, to create uh, products for me that I have in my mind. I have some idea or something that they've created. I use often, I create from what I see. Um, and I just take something and I start to evolve ideas from that. And here we've taken these screens, which we normally put fresh flowers on for wedding arches, etc. And I decided to try something different. And that is to take uh, what's a local skill using wire, color wire, which is normally made in basketry here in South Africa. And we entwined these rings to make all these screens. And um, it ended up that one of my staff members was an absolute artist doing this. Um, so I just encouraged him to do that. He made them all. Um, and then we use them for different things. Um, again, it's, it's, um, it's, yeah, using them for multiple different designs. Like here you'll see I've used the screens in various different ways um, with flowers uh, incorporated into it or next to it um, and so on. Again, using crafts, local crafts, I've taken old um, protea stems and I've entwined them in wires to make them art pieces. So they're no longer a fresh flower as we see it. We normally see a protea as a fresh flower 
and it's in a vase. And now suddenly it's got a completely different um, um, thing to it. And it's the context is completely different. So, you know, people are surprised to see, oh, this, oh, this is a protest. So yeah, it's we we surprise ourselves sometimes with some of the ideas that we've come up with. And it's quite exciting to see how we can evolve those things. Um, so I try as much as possible to use locally grown flowers. That's not always indigenous. Uh, I try always to use indigenous, but also exotic flowers like anthurium. They're obviously not indigenous, indigenous to South Africa, but they are locally grown. So I always ask the question, where do the flowers come from? I know a lot of them still come from Kenya. A lot of the roses come from Kenya, which um, I do use. Uh, they are locally lo um, grown roses, but the quality and the colors are not as um, varied. So I do mix it, but I do try and use flowers that are all locally grown. Um, I even use uh, items such as wood. And in this particular uh, slide, there are um, images of iron wood, which is incredibly beautiful. It's it's a very hard wood, takes very long to grow. It's, it's Once the trees die, they leave these incredible sculptural forms. And I've used them in various different ways here. As you can see, I've created um, fire in logs to um, fabric that was created by a different artisan mixed with flowers to create a heritage theme. And then spring with pure wool um, um, sort of growing out of the log. And then um, jacaranda, when we have jacaranda season, which is a big thing for the hotel, big seasonal um, draw card. So which is what we see here. Um, we have a season in in Johannesburg in particular and Pretoria. Um, it's called the, the Jacaranda season, which happens in September, October. And for the hotel, that's a very big draw card for guests to come. They have spectacular views um, of the city with these incredible trees, as you can see in the background, these purple trees. And I then incorporate designs within the hotel spaces that have these purple flowers that look like jacarandas. So I try to bring what's happening outside into the hotel. So, you know, at the moment it's autumn. So I try to bring in autumnal colors um, and that into the hotel. So I work very much on season as well. So um, here are, I mentioned to Michaela earlier, she wanted to know about my logo. My logo is inspired by spheres and these kind of spheres that are the base of what I've got here in our what we call seed pods um, are made by artisans. I don't make them. Um, made by local artisans using sticks and vines and they create these beautiful spheres which are just a basic form and then I add all sorts of items onto that. Here we've added sisal which is obviously natural but it's dyed and then a whole variety of different seeds that are selected or collected from uh, locally here in Johannesburg or around the country depending on what's in what's in season and then also we we reuse these we use them for different things we can add fresh flowers to them we can add Christmas to it um, we create all different things again um, uh, again doing this modular design uh, and nested design structures that can be used in different contexts. Um, again, these screens are the same thing. Uh, we can use one single screen or we can add two different to different sizes, different colors, um, and we can add different items to them to create a whole different look and feel. From, you can see we did heritage here again with the, um, we have a, a, a day in September as well, uh, which is our heritage day. It's a public holiday. And then I created these screens with using heritage flowers. So we used, we put all in, in indigenous flower. And then, yeah, to, to Christmas even. Um, integrate development with growth. So I very much work with my staff, I train them up and I allow them uh, opportunities to create designs themselves. And I really 
um, I do leave that with them. I give them that responsibility and that 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 opportunity to create designs themselves. Um, and just upskilling people and encouraging them, which is such a wonderful um, gift you can give people. Um, this, these, this particular slide is showing images of um, items that are made from natural products, but they aren't strictly life-friendly chemistry. Um, they are spray painted with paints, um, and also the flowers of the flowers on the right are dyed. The flowers on the left, the little yellow balls, those are completely natural, but the flowers on the right are dyed. So the, those that part of what I do is not, um, you know, that's not life friendly chemistry, and that basically is the same as the floral foam, which I'll go into shortly, um, which I also use, which is not life friendly chemistry. Okay, so the other property that I work with, I'm a consultant there, and that's also part of the Four Seasons group, and that is the um, Four Seasons Mauritius. Uh, the context of this property is entirely different to Johannesburg, obviously. This is an island resort. It's not a city hotel like the first one. So here you'll see this beautiful vase of fresh flowers, a lot of it, well, half of it is farmed locally in Mauritius, and the other half is actually harvested out the garden. So this property is a secluded oasis at the edge of an idyllic lagoon in Mauritius. So that is the theme, um, and obviously the look and feel will be entirely different to Johannesburg. So um, to be locally attuned and responsive here, um, I encourage only to use locally farmed flowers. They aren't, thankfully, when I got there, they weren't importing flowers. And I encourage them not to use imported flowers um, into Mauritius. There, there are a lot of farms there, um, limited in terms of what varieties are available, but still, it is possible to create from what they've got. Um, and also in the gardens, there's so much to harvest. They've got the most beautiful, beautiful gardens. So the ladies, as they're delivering flowers to the rooms or the villas, you know, they're harvesting leaves along the way and, and to use for the next lot of um, villas and arriving guests uh, where they need flowers. Um, so here, the, you know, this is a mixture of flowers using variety of flowers that not, aren't necessarily indigenous to Mauritius but um, do grow in the gardens. Um, and we are also planting specific plants that are very nice to use in the rooms. It's got very interesting leaf texture. It's got interesting leaf shapes. Um, what we can't get in flower forms and flower variety, we're trying to use in actual leaf structure and leaf designs. Um, so yes, yeah, so resource um, efficient is the same thing as in these images. Um, it's just using all these foliages that you see here um, are all from the gardens. The anthuriums are coming from the farm, but all the leaves are from the from the garden. Here, are these vases, I encourage them to use, you know, leaves with colors and try and make like a yellow green theme. You know, that looks to me like it could have been flowers, and you you, know, you have to know that it's actually leaves, but you know, that's not having to use flowers, just using greenery. So um, it brings me to, it's growing people like flowers, um, which is encouraging people to try something different, enables personal growth and flourishing individuals. Um, so I just mentioned the floral foam, the floral foam a bit earlier, which brings me to the life-friendly chemistry. Obviously, that's not life-friendly chemistry at all, the floral foam. Um, and it is what I based my um, biomimicry practitioner presentation on, is to find nature-inspired solutions to replace non-biodegradable floral foam. Um, so um, I'm not going to go into the whole presentation of that. I'll just put a little bit in here. Uh, the challenge for this presentation was that floral foam is toxic for the environment. Um, it's a single-use product made from plastic. 
um, it becomes a microplastic and it goes into this into our water systems and into the sea basically around Mauritius into the sea life okay so how does nature absorb and store water is what my question was um, that I had to ask so just I'm just bringing up three slides I'm not going to put the whole presentation but I did look at three uh, models um, and that was looking at apple skin and pulp structure um, and the orchid root and xylem tissue structure and um, mushroom and sponge structure and you know after all of this my question was like I have so much waste which it's one thing putting it into composting but what if we took all that waste from the flowers and were able to put some form of mycelium to it um, that was then mixed with soil or something that can then be pressed into forms of um, blocks that can be then used as floral foam. That was kind of where I was going with my, my presentation. That I'm not sure if it's possible, but um, yeah. If you'd like to find out more about my presentation I did there, please email me and I can send you more information on what I was working on for that. So um, to bring it back and to start closing this off, um, what can we learn from bees and flowers? Um, can we use pollen as a metaphor here? So it's a question I'm going to ask you. Um, if it is about pollen, what is the exchange in hospitality? Pollen is what bees need to eat for energy and survival, and for flowers, it is what ensures their survival through pollinated seed production. If pollen ensures survival for both parties, flowers and bees, then what is the exchange in hospitality? So I'll leave you with that question, and I'll end it off by saying that I'm an interpreter of nature and aim to inspire all from what I create. And what inspires me is the geometry in nature, like the double spiral of the sunflower seed disc. Thank you so much. Um, I've come to the end of the presentation and um, I'd love to hear if you have some questions. Thank you, Emily, for this wonderful presentation and these beautiful pictures and all the passion you put in your in your job it's not only a job it's your mission or your passion i suppose yeah um, yes we have some questions in the chat the first ones i saw was about um dying um naturally i heard also that um colors uh, could be used uh, from plants but it's limited colors then but i suppose it's not working with this spraying you mentioned Yes, so the bamboo in that image, um, that was spread. I wouldn't be able to dye that. Um, I know that you can dye. Obviously, the wool that I bought was dyed, but I don't think that was naturally dyed. I have seen you know, cloth being naturally dyed. I've not tried it in flowers. I, to be honest, I haven't explored that yet. Um, I have definitely considered it, but I haven't explored that to, to dye it naturally. You know, it's a whole other... It, yeah, it's just, you know, when I have some time, I will explore mm -hmm. that because it's definitely a possibility. Yeah. In Austria, it was Easter just around the corner. So uh, we use also natural colors for uh, Easter eggs, like beetroot juice. It's a very beautiful color. Yes, so, it is. And yeah. uh, several. Uh, shades of green can be done with spinach and all this. So maybe this works for flowers too. Yes, that would be wonderful. And it is something that I would, um, you know, I will eventually do at some at a point. Um, I don't dye a lot of flowers actually. Um, I do dye the banksias, um, but um, it would be wonderful to create another project where we've explored that and make a whole story around that. Mm -hmm. um, just like we did for Easter now, um, instead of using polystyrene or artificial eggs, we took chicken eggs, blew them all out, 
dyed them and then used them as decoration in the flowers. So you can create these stories and these um yeah, different designs. You know, we we go through, I know that I go through these like um periods of um it's like it's like the season of seed balls or it's a season of jacaranda or it's a season of uh, dyed flowers. So I go through these phases of creating different designs. So I'm sure that will be one of my next projects is tying flowers with natural color, natural food, uh, natural plant um, colors. Yeah. I also love this. I don't know how you name it. This, um, it's the big, um, the big things that you wire uh, uh, meant. Oh, the screen. Wires? Screens. Yeah. It's called screens. They are beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, I must say the the person the the one of my staff members um who came to me not even a year ago um needing work he came from construction I said look I need some help you can help me carry the vases etc or clean the vases and and then I said look try this and what he came up with was a complete surprise you know for him as well it was I mean it yes it was it was wonderful to empower someone like that and make them feel so proud of what they've done. Mm -hmm. um, are there any other questions in the audience? Michaela wanted to have the whole presentation on the floral form, I see, in the chat. Yes, yes, I, I, I always want more. Uh, but if you cannot give me everything right now, Emily, you, you put your uh, email address on the screen and I could not record it. Can you put it in the chat quickly? So people yes. can, you know, it was... Emily at boutique florist dot Z A. I was lost before the end of that. I'm absolutely sure there's going to be people around, even around this virtual table that know where to point you with your questions. So I think Maria has her hand up. Hi, Maria. Yeah, Maria. Hi. Hello. Hi. Emily, thank you very much for your presentation. It was very inspiring, really. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you so much. Um, I really like what you said about um, the, the pandemic being as a sign of um, nature to pay attention. I think that's um, a very good way to see it, to see like a crisis and transform it into something uh, positive. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, I think I think we know that when we have a very difficult thing to pass through, a crisis brings opportunity. So, you know, for me that was, um, you know, it was a point where everything was closed down, and there was, you know, the whole hospitality industry, the hotel was closed. It was no, the flowers were thrown away, closed, the market closed. So it really was a complete. A complete shutdown. You were forced to think something different, forced to, you know, come up with new ideas. So for me, the COVID pandemic was an absolute blessing. I know, you know, for me, it was a, an incredible opportunity to do things different, and that's through crisis. <laughs> yeah. Yes, for sure. Um, I wanted to ask you in the in the whole flower industry. Where do you see the the sustainable movement going or moving? Is it, it is gaining more uh, strength right now, or is it like on a low level? You know, it's a bit of a it's quite difficult because on the one hand we have a lot of guests that want to have beautiful weddings with lots of flowers. Um, and it's all about that. And there's not that consciousness, consciousness of where those flowers actually come from. Um, hospitality, um, it depends. Four Seasons Hotel group um, are very much looking at sustainability. Um, and so that's why they actually are asking me to come and help and um, guide them on it. Because they actually have you know, that's this responsibility. Um, so I think it's a, it's an education that has to happen and a, and, a, and a perception that has to change. 
um, in terms of you know where those flowers come from. Everyone talks about food, and there's such an such so much um, spotlight on where's the food coming from and how's that food produced and you know how much land is the food taking and you know et cetera, et cetera. But no one's actually asking the same question from how those flowers are farmed and where those flowers are coming from. It's doing exactly the same thing, if not more. So, yeah. Uh, Vivian has a question too, or holds up her hand. Yeah, thanks so much for the presentation, Emily. I guess wanted to kind of bounce on what you just said. I'm curious, and I'm just not as aware. Um, what is the impact of floral farming to the environment? Like, what are the detrimental parts of it that you see? And just wanted to hear more from your perspective. So there's a lot of pesticides used, and there's a lot of um, herbicides used, um, uh, which just goes into the groundwater. So that's that's a big thing. Um, you know, to grow a rose is incredible the amount of um, chemicals um, spread onto roses. Even in, in, in Mauritius, I went to a rose farm there and I could see, you know, um, you know, the flowers, the leaves had sprayed on and he said, oh, they, they spray the roses every day, I think it was, which I was quite surprised about. So there's a lot of chemical um, um, yeah, impact it has to the environment. And not only that, it's also the amount of water used to to grow flowers in particular roses so that is a big thing mm -hmm. as well and then for the pesticides and herbicides you mentioned like are those necessary things chemicals needed to spray in order to grow have the roses grow you know i don't to be honest i don't know much about rose or any flower of farming so i know that there are there are some farm there are methods where they're using insects to try and fight of other insects there is that but I, I can't speak much for the actual flower farming and how it's done. There are different methods um, and it's all regulated in different ways, um, depending on, especially Holland, who's very involved in farming roses in, in Kenya. I mean, it, it's enormous there, but how it's really done and if it's sustainable, you know, I'm, I'm not so sure. I, I don't think it's, it's, I mean, ultimately it uses a lot of, water and, and pesticides at a, level, at a certain level. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I suppose with all these uh, new regulations concerning the supply chain, also the hotel industry, hospitality industry is involved in, they have to know what uh, where their flowers come from or where they were farmed. I think it's maybe it's not starting in South Africa, um, but in Europe, definitely. Because not only the big companies, or the multinational uh, companies have to do sustainability reportings, also smaller companies, smaller hotels perhaps have to have to fill out the forms where all the food comes from, where all, all the flowers come from, where all these, um, yeah, where their um, supply chains are originated. Yeah, and, and, and that's, you know, that's one level of it. But for me, I'm, you know, even because I had to ask myself that question as well, like, where's the flowers coming from? Okay, it's coming from Kenya. So I'm still needing the flowers, so I still buy it. Um, but it's like, okay, a step further is, um, what varieties can I use that will last longer than a week? What varieties can I use um, that are fresh now that I can recycle into something else. So I, I'm very careful about the variety of flowers that I use. Um, just trying to reduce the amount of flowers that I could be using. You know, like if I had to be, if I was not a sustainable um, florist, I could be using any variety of flowers. I, I mean, there's, you know, it's not quite like the the flowers in Holland, the variety we have. But there's a lot of, of flowers I don't buy because I know I can't use them again. Mm. Yeah. Um, are there any questions? I have a question. What What is your next step? What What except for you know dyeing everything naturally and uh, getting your flower um substrate Michaela, I, this is a very bad connection i didn't uh catch your question 
My question is, what is uh, Emily's next step? Uh, what is the next big project? Let me put it in the chat. Michaela, okay, Michaela, I didn't hear your full question. Um, I just heard the last bit, which is what is my next big project? Yeah, let's take this like, oh, yeah, the next big project, project she wants okay. to know about. <laughs> um, I really want to do something for Floral Foam. I really want to try and find a solution for that. Um, you know, it's all lovely making flowers and doing that every day and, um, you know, encouraging people. But, you know, ultimately, I still want to actually try and find a solution for the bar, for, for the for the floral firm. So that is where I need to be looking. So if you know any persons you might that might be of interest for Emily, just to reach out and connect them. I suppose it's a good idea to connect people. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thank so you. for the sake of time, I think we uh, we come to an end. If there is not another question, a very urgent one, I would um, wrap up a bit and then is there any last urgent question? I don't think so. I check the chat. No, I think we are fine. We're thank fine. you, Emily. Thank you very much for your inspiring talk and for the ideas and all your beautiful pictures and um, flower decoration arrangements. Thank you, audience, for the questions and the helpers of biomimicry. And yeah, thank you for your interest and for joining us. If you wish to support us, uh, we are happy accepting donation, but we will also be happy if you just fill out the survey form so that we keep on uh, tracking new ideas new topics we want to tackle and if you want to be a guest of our webinar just reach out to us and contact us yeah i think that's it the next webinar is in um may let's try if michaela is um has a good connection now i think it's the 17th of um may michaela am i right can you hear me yeah yeah, so I will be hosting Chris Montero, uh, biomimicry professional, capturing nature's beauty on May 17th, 18 CET. So please stay tuned. We will uh, put it on Inventbrite in the next days and uh, looking forward to seeing you there um, and taking over from Sonia. Thanks, Sonia, and uh, thanks, Emily, Thank you. for your great uh, presentation. Thank you both of you so much for the opportunity and um, it was very inspiring to be here and uh, listening to the questions and having this opportunity to just share what you know what I'm trying to do and making it broader you know it's all about just making people aware so thank you so much for the opportunity to broaden the awareness. It was a pleasure having you here and I, I'm looking forward to connect you with you soon so Thank you. Have a great evening. Thanks for joining Thank us. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.